you touched on uh, awareness, you know, for, for the public awareness of brain injury, and, and you're exactly right. The last five years, it's really come out from behind the curtain. People are starting to talk about uh, the concussive issues, mostly related to football. Um, football's got some real challenges. We lose six to 12 athletes, high school athletes a year pass away. They, you know, they, they, they have fatalities from playing football and the head related injuries. And um, it's a very concerning problem, obviously, and we're everybody, there's a lot of great minds trying to solve that. We worked on our technology for two years. I started almost five years ago now working on this project. And for those two years, I was really concerned. Every day I was watching the news like, gosh, is somebody going to come out with a helmet design to beat us to it? You know, I had to believe that somebody else was working on this project or this problem for, for motorcycles. And um, we went through the whole two year period and thankfully, you know, nobody ever came out with anything and, and showed any technology of any significance for uh, managing rotational acceleration. MIPS was known and in the marketplace already with their solutions, but um, it, they were they were not gaining mass acceptance at that point. Um, but this awareness issue has really helped them as well because now you're starting to see the MIPS technology uh, applied to motorcycle and bicycle helmets and uh, in in a pretty significant manner. And it gives in a it gives a manufacturer a pretty simple solution to add the MIPS technology to an existing helmet design to get some benefit for rotational acceleration. Um, that being said, MIPS compared to ODS, there's some significant differences. Uh, our technology has that ability to three-dimensionally displace, which MIPS does not. It's a single shear plane. There's also some constraints by, uh, on MIPS by the shape of the human head where uh, it works in certain directions better than it can work in other directions. And also it's more effective at certain angles of impact than others. Uh, if you get real vertical uh, and, and, and further away from 45 degrees, it's a little less effective. Uh, at least that's what we've seen in the laboratory testing. But um, the nice thing with the omnidirectional suspension is it's free at whatever angle, at whatever uh, location to displace in any which way equally, which is, is a nice benefit that we have. Um, so anyways, yeah, it was kind of interesting that, um, you know, we were excited to get to the market and make our announcement in 2012. It was November 30th of 2012. We had a press conference at the Geico Honda uh, team facility. Uh, and showed our technology and introduced it to the marketplace. And that was a fun day. It was exciting to talk about it finally and to be able to, to showcase it because guys were seeing the guy, you know, there was a couple uh, spy photos from the Geico test track. Oh, hey, what's that helmet those guys are wearing? It's completely different, you know? And the, the very first ones were all black with black trims and black visors and you couldn't really tell much about the helmet, you know? And I think we did have a 6D logo on it at the time. And it was like, you know, it was kind of fun, you know, hey, what's that helmet those guys are wearing, you know? The whole GEICO program came about for us. It was really kind of neat the way it happened. I, I made one phone call, and that was to uh, Rick Ziegfelder, one of the owners of, of Factory Connection. I've known him for a long time, and he's, he's been a friend. We used to race together, in fact, back in New England, uh, way back in the day. But uh, I called Rick and said, hey, listen, um, we've been working for a couple of years on a helmet technology that is uh, proving very effective in the laboratory uh, compared to traditional helmet design designs and you know would you guys be interested in uh, wearing our helmet with uh, this coming season you know next year in, in Supercross and Motocross and Rick's comment back to me was it's it's helmets and boots every year that seems to take our riders out so if you've got something uh, that's that's working then it is better we we are absolutely interested in that the health and well-being of our riders is, is number one and uh, so his recommendation was, was go in and sit down with Darren and Mike and uh, uh, Mike LaRocco and Darren Borcherding, their, their team managers. And, and if they like what you've got, then we'll get it in front of the Tomax. And if uh, the Tomax like it, we'll get it in front of the rest of the team. So 
Robert and I, we, we jumped on an airplane, we flew to Cortez, uh, we met the Tomacs at their uh, property there. They've got a, a wonderful place, they were amazing hosts. Um, we spent an afternoon and the following morning uh, riding or testing with Eli. And uh, we had him go out in his showy, they were in showies at the time, and, and, and do a session just like he normally would, and then come back in. We put him in the 60, sent him back out. He did his uh, same session, came back in, said, hey, I, I like it, the helmet's light, I can, the airflow's good, there's no issues with my goggles, it's comfortable, you know, I, I feel pretty good right away, you know, and I said, okay put the showy back on, went back out, did another session, came in, we swapped one more time, and then he spent the rest of the time uh, that whole afternoon and riding on his outdoor track. The first day was super cross, the second day was on his outdoor track, um, and he spent the rest of the time in the 60. And the really cool thing was we were driving back to the airport, Robert and I were in the rental car, and I got a text from Eli saying, hey, let's let's figure this out because I really like the helmet, I'd like to wear it at Monster Energy Cup. And uh, so I was like, okay, great, that's cool. Probably won't happen that fast, but you know we'll, we're we're going to do our best here. So, I uh, if and, and and the thing with Geico was if if the Tomax liked it, then we would get in front of the rest of the riders, and that was Will Hahn and Justin Bogle and and um, Zach Osborne. And so we had a meeting with them at the Geico facility, shared all the data, let them put the helmet on, try it, fit it. Uh, Will needed a, a small, Zach Bell needed a small, and we only had mediums at the time. And so, you know, we were in the very beginning, we were having to shim some helmets down for the to fit the guys properly. But, you know, we assured them that by uh, Supercross, you know, the start of the season, we would have everything in place and, re and ready to go for them, and which we did. Um, so. I think uh, Justin Bogle was the first guy to crash in one. Um, I got a call on a Friday night at dinner time from Darren, and I'm going, "Oh, geez, this can't be good," you know. And uh, uh, sure enough, it was Darren to call in to tell me that Justin had just had a crash at the Supercross track. And uh, as I recall, he um, had a problem and, and, and basically crashed into the face of a big corner, you know, after a, a rhythm section, uh, broke his wrist, and I think hurt his shoulder. And uh, he said, "I." I don't even think I hit my head, you know, and the cool thing was the helmet had a big old, you know, dirt clot on it and Margie obviously had hit his head, you know, and he just said, you know, it was just a different feeling than, than, than what I was used to and he was, he was pretty excited that, you know, everything upstairs was okay anyways, but unfortunately he had an injury that had him switch series, you know, that year. But um, uh, then probably the, mo the biggest single milestone for our company uh, from the crash perspective was uh, Zach Bell at Dallas in, in 2013. Um, we were at our first trade show talking to dealers, uh, showing our product for the very first time, talking about the technology. And, and that night they had an industry function where they were going to put the broadcast the Supercross to every all the show participants. And uh, um, so uh, we boogied out of there actually that night. One of our uh, team lives in, in Indianapolis and we were uh, basically at his house on the couch watching Supercross and here's Zach Bell leading his first heat race in his first supercross ever and uh, pulling away from the guys and all of a sudden he has just this horrific crash and uh, he comes flying off the motorcycle probably 30 feet in the air uh, flat lands on you know very hard ground and it was a pretty ugly uh, ugly crash he caught his foot on the face of the jump trying to scrub and just threw the motorcycle away big time um, Zach took a big crash and he laid there motionless. They cut for commercial. Uh, I honestly didn't know what to think. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, we're, we're done before we started here, you know. And, and I, I got a text from one of the mechanics that said, hey, Zach's up under his own power, you know, before they came back from commercial. I'm like, oh gosh, thank goodness, you know. Um, and sure enough, they came back to the broadcast and Zach was up and talking to the medics and he had to take the SCAT2 concussion uh, test protocol uh, that night. He passed all of that and he was allowed to come back out and uh, compete for the, in his last chance qualifier. He moved from second, uh, third to second to qualify, made his first main event that night. And uh, we had a dealer text us that night, 12 helmets Monday morning, please. And it was pretty cool. And that, I think that crash, it's been viewed probably over a million times by now on YouTube. 
YouTube, and uh, it was it was a pretty big statement that our helmet was doing something uh, special, and and it was uh, it was nice to see the visor screw sheared off just the way it was designed to do. Um, obviously, the helmet displaced, and we we studied the helmet afterwards, and we could see the outer registration uh, uh, compression of the two liners coming together, and we could actually see the edge of this damper cup. Uh, left an impression in the opposite side of the EPS and they had uh, come out of registration about uh, eight or nine millimeters and uh, so uh, and, and we're talking about this change of location and this displacement in a matter of six to eight milliseconds you know a very tiny fraction amount of time of how how quickly this impact uh, scenario happens but that's the benefit of the technology in the 60 helmet is this inside liner can displace when the outside of the helmet hits a, a ground or impacts a, an item. And that's the, the functionality of the technology is right there.